This video contains the solutions to the vectors and three dimensions practice problems. For these first three problems, we're given three vectors in three dimensions and asked to do some various problems. In the first one, we're asked to do some vector arithmetic. And the thing that you have to keep in mind is that when we do vector arithmetic, all of the operations happen component-wise. So A is 2, negative 2, 5. C is 0, 1, negative 2. And B is 6, 2, negative 3. So using our regular order of operations, we do the multiplication first. So we get 12, 4, negative 6. And then we do the subtraction. So we get 2 minus 0 minus 12, negative 2 minus 1 minus 4, and 5 minus negative 2 minus negative 6. So working that out, we get negative 10, negative 7, and then positive 13. And that's it. For the next one, we're asked to find a unit vector that points in the same direction as the vector b. And whenever we're asked for something like this, whenever we need to find a unit vector that points in a particular direction, we need to take that vector that we're given and divide by its magnitude. That's always what we're going to do to find a unit vector in a particular direction. So the first thing we need to figure out is the magnitude of v. So b is, the magnitude of b, I should say, is the square root of the squares, the sum of the squares of its components. So 6 squared plus 2 squared plus negative 3 squared, that's going to be 36 plus 4 plus 9, that's 49, and the square root of 49 is 7. So this is going to be b divided by 7, that's the same as 1 7th times b, so that's going to be 6 7 2 7 negative 3 7 that's it. Finally, we're asked to find which vector has greater magnitude, a plus b or b minus c. So the first thing we're going to have to do is figure out what those two vectors are, and then we'll find both of their magnitudes, and then we'll just compare the two numbers that we get. So a plus b is 2, negative 2, 5, plus 6, 2, negative 3, and that works out to be 8, 0, 2. And then b minus c is 6, 2, negative 3, minus 0, 1, negative 2. And that works out to be 6, 1, minus 1. So now let's figure out the magnitudes. a plus b magnitude, that's just going to be the sum, the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So 8 squared plus 0 squared plus 2 squared, that works out to be the square root of 68. And then the magnitude of b minus c, again, the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So 6 squared plus 1 squared plus negative 1 squared. And that works out to be the square root of 38. And since 68 is more than 38, the square root of 68 is more than the square root of 38. So that means that a plus b has greater magnitude. For this next problem, we need to take a vector that's being described to us and decompose it into its uh, into the cardinal directions. So we need to find the different components of this vector. So we know that the submarine is climbing at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal, and also that it's heading to the northeast. And we're being told that its speed is 20 knots. That's telling us the magnitude of the vector. So if the submarine's velocity vector is given by s, this tells us that the magnitude of s is 20. Now it's easier if we start with the angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal because if we can figure that out that's going to give us the vertical component the the z direction component of this velocity vector. So let's look at a side view of the submarine's travel. So here's the horizontal and the submarine is going up at an angle of 30 degrees from the horizontal. So this vector here is the vector that I'm calling s and again remember that we know that the length of that vector is 20. And this vertical side of my uh, triangle, this is the z component of s. 
So I'm looking at this from the side, so that vertical thing is the z component. But that's a right triangle, so I just need to use some trigonometry. The z component is just going to be the length of the hypotenuse, which is 20, times the sine of 30 degrees. The sine of 30 degrees is a half, so the z component is 10. In a second, we're going to see that we also need to know this horizontal component. Now, that's not an x or y component, as we'll see in a second, but we're going to want to know the length of that side. And that, again, using the same kind of trigonometry, is just going to be 10 times the square root of 3. So now let's do a top-down view. And again, we'll use the same situation that we were doing before, where if we have an x-axis and a y-axis, we'll think of the x-axis as being east-west and the y-axis as being north-south. So the z-axis in this view is coming straight out of the screen at you. We're being told that the, the submarine is heading northeast, which means that the top-down view of the velocity vector looks like that. Now that vector that I've just drawn is, does not have length 20, right? Because we're looking at it from above, which means we're missing the, the angle. We're, sort of, we're kind of collapsing it down into two dimensions. And this is where that 10 times the square root of 3 comes in. The vector that we're looking at is actually this horizontal component of my velocity vector. So that vector that I just drew there, this has length 10 times the square root of 3. And it's also the hypotenuse of a 45-45 right triangle. Which means, again, I can use some trigonometry to figure out what the length of those sides are. Using sines and cosines, the sine of 45 and the cosine of 45 are both the square root of 2 over 2. So with a little bit of trig, we can figure out that this distance is 5 radical 6 over 2, and this distance is also 5 radical 6 over 2. So that gives us our three components. The x component is 5 square root of 6 over 2, the y component is 5 squared of 6 over 2, and as we figured out before, the z component is 10. In this one, we have an, a model airplane that's flying, and it's being acted upon by various forces. It's flying horizontally due north at 20 miles an hour, it's got a horizontal crosswind blowing east at 20 miles an hour, and a downdraft blowing vertically down at 10 miles an hour, and we want to find the resulting speed of the plane. So the resulting velocity vector of the plane is equal to the direction the plane is trying to go, that vector, plus the wind vector, plus the downdraft vector. All of those forces added together are going to give us the resulting velocity of the plane. So, again, keeping in mind that if we think in three dimensions, here's my x-axis, which represents east-west, here's my y-axis, which represents north-south, and here's my z-axis, which represents up and down, the plane traveling horizontally due north at 20 miles an hour means that the east-west component is zero, the north-south component is positive 20, and the up-down component is zero. That's the plane vector. The wind vector is horizontal east at 20 miles an hour, so that's going to be 20, zero, zero. And the downdraft is blowing vertically down at 10 miles an hour, so that's going to be zero, zero, minus 10. Adding those together, we get 20, 20, minus 10. And then we want to know the speed, that's going to be the magnitude of the vector. So the magnitude of this resulting vector is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. 20 squared plus 20 squared plus negative 10 squared, that's going to work out to be the square root of 900, which is 30. And so the answer here is 30 miles per hour.